Hi everybody, um, welcome to our induction lesson for A-level sociology. Um, hopefully that previous clip has given you um, a bit more information about what an A-level in sociology looks like. And it's true to say that there are lots of different perspectives within A-level that we will look at and there's lots of different ways of seeing the world. And the beauty of sociology is that we're able to look at situations arising in front of us and apply our different sociological hats to that to understand what the situation is before us. So um, in terms of the A-level itself and specifically what you'll be learning, um, in year 12 you will cover um, three main areas of the course. So we'll look at the family, we'll look at education, and we'll look at research methods. Now, research methods underpins the whole of the A-level in the sense that you need to recognise that some um, methods are more appropriate than others for studying particular areas. Um, but so it will, it will appear in year 12 and year 13. But the main topics are family and education. And within that, you'll look at things such as changing patterns and trends, you know, family types. What do they look like today? What's the most common? Why have they changed? Education, you'll consider things such as who achieves the best in education and who are the most poor performing groups um, in education and why? What is the purpose of the education system? Is it to ensure everyone has the equal opportunity to be successful or is it a way of controlling the masses? Um, looking at the family, again, similar idea. Is it a positive function? Do everyone have their needs met by the family? Or actually, are some groups, um, so for example, feminists would say women, are some groups the, the underdog in the family? And are some groups treated less fairly and have a less positive experience within the family setting? Moving on to year 13, um, we will be looking at crime and deviance, beliefs in society, and also looking at core theory. OK, so the core theory, again, underpins the overall A level, um, but we look at, at it in a lot more depth when it comes to year 13. So those of you that have done GCSE, you'll be familiar with your functionalism, feminism, Marxism, but we'll look even more broadly than that. We'll look at some of the more um, interactionist theories. We'll look um, at key questions such as, um, is there any place for values within sociology or should they be value free? Can sociology be studied in a scientific manner or is that not possible? So we'll look at these more kind of theoretical abstract ideas as well. Crime and deviance tends to be the one that really captures people's imagination. Saying that, they're all interesting topics, but crime and deviance does tend to be the one that really ignites some passion there. So we'll look at factors. Who is more likely to commit crime? Um, have the crime patterns changed? How do we deal with crime in our society? Um, is policing in the criminal justice system fair? OK, um, and then beliefs in society looks at the role of beliefs in our society today. And um, that's not just religion, that's other belief systems as well. Um, but considering what are the benefits or the problems of holding particular beliefs? You know, can religion be inclusive or can it be divisive? Can religion be a source of conflict? Should we have it? in our society today? Um, are scientific beliefs more credible and more valuable than um, religious beliefs? You know, so we'll look at lots of different um, ideas there. Are there any um, organisations that are um, have negative consequences in our society? OK, so there's lots and lots of different questions. There's lots of different areas that we can look at within these units. And as we explore them further, they uncover lots and lots of different elements and um, sort of underpinning a lot of this is different theoretical perspectives. So um, as I said before, your, your main structural theories like your functionist Marxist feminist, but then also some of the more interactionist theories as well. Other things that underpin sociology is our analysis of social groups and, you know, gender, class, age and how those different individuals in society or those different groups in society experience society in different ways you know some people may experience it more fairly than others some people's life chances may be more positive than others okay and we will you'll be allowed through sociology and using that sociological imagination to really understand what our society looks like and to question some of those taken for granted assumptions about our society OK, so this um, A-level is a 100% exam. 
So everything that you do will come down to three final exams. So you will have paper one, paper two and paper three. Now, paper one will be your education methods in context and theory methods. Paper two will be beliefs and also it will involve family and households. And paper three will involve crime and deviance and theory and methods. OK, so they're the three main exam papers. There's no coursework. OK, so it does mean that there's going to be a need to continuously review and reflect on your learning as you go through the course, because at the end of the two years, you're going to have a lot of content to remember. OK, so um, obviously we require you to kind of systematically review and revise your work as we go through. OK, so the expectations. So there's four sociology teachers in the department. Um, we will expect you to contribute to lessons and be prepared to join in, have 95 percent plus attendance, complete all homework set and also complete your nine hours independent study. Um, any work that you miss needs to be catched up on um, and you should contact the teacher if you are missing anything before the next lesson coming back. Um, and obviously you'll be expected to complete regular assessments. What you can expect from us, so from us you can expect interesting lessons, varied activities, consistent monitoring of your progress and communication about that, regular feedback and up-to-date knowledge. Okay, We want to make this course as exciting and interesting and engaging for you as possible, so we're constantly thriving to update our lessons and make sure that it's, it's relevant to the world going on around us today. OK, what you'll need then. So you will need a ring binder folder organised into different subsections. You will need equipment. So make sure you've got your paper, make sure you've got your pens. And um, the book here is book one, the sociology book one. Um, it's not compulsory that you buy this, but um, we would recommend that you access this textbook to help you with your um, A level and help you read more broadly around the subject. Um, not optional is a can do attitude. OK, so everybody taking sociology needs to be prepared to really um, get to grips with the course. So there'll be some very challenging um, concepts and ideas at certain places. There'll be some challenging tasks, but we need you to have that can do attitude and always thrive to improve. OK, so what I thought we'd do is just a little introduction to the A-level sociology and um, just to give you a little bit more of an understanding about what this is going to look like. Um, so I'm aware some of you will have done um, the sociology at GCSE and you'll be quite confident with some of the theories of sociology that I've previously mentioned already in this in this video. Some of you will have no idea whatsoever. OK, and that's fine. It's our job to make sure that everybody can access the course, whether you've done it at GCSE or not. OK, so there are three um, sets of images in front of you. One, two and three. I just want you to take a moment to have a look at these and just to consider what do you think each of the images or each set of images is representing? And I want you also to consider what words might you associate with what you're looking at? OK, so you might want to pause it and make a few notes um, whilst you consider what those what those different images are representing. OK, so we just pause there and then I'll give some feedback in a second. OK, so I would imagine, number one, you might talk about things like unity, working together, collectivism. Number two, perhaps you might have identified this inequality. Some of you might be familiar with the word patriarchy that's male dominated. You see on both of those images, the male is higher up. Um, discrimination, pay gap, uh, glass ceiling. The glass ceiling is another term which, again, you only like to know if you've done a GCSE, but the idea that women can only work so far up in the employment industry and then generally experience a glass ceiling where it's difficult for them to climb any higher. Number three, again, you may talk about inequality, status power the working classes okay you've got somebody shining somebody else's shoe you've got someone sitting there in the street while someone else is cleaning their shoe okay so there's a difference there in life chances there's a difference there as i say in status and in power now these images link to our main theories of sociology so i've mentioned already functionism, feminism and Marxism. So functionism is one of the main theories which we threads through all of the topics that we look at within sociology. And it's a theory that sees all aspects of society as positive and working together for the benefit of all. 
Okay, so functionists have a very positive view of society. They think that everything works together. It's like a one big system. Things like work like clockwork, it all works together. Number two, feminism is a theory that believes society is dominated by men and needs to change to give women equal power. OK, so if I just flick back here, this image here, this second one, that's, that's demonstrating the feminist view of society, the idea that men have more power and we need to change that. And then the final one, number three, is the Marxist theory. And that sees societies divided between lower and higher classes in society, with the middle class having the ultimate power. OK, so they believe that you have the 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 higher, the middle and upper classes who have the power in society and they are able to um, control everything for us. And then you have the lower classes who basically have to do as they're told and have limited power in our society. So. I just thought it might be nice to do a little bit of application. So I've just run through with you the three main theories. So as I say, functionism, everything's great, all works together, everything's beneficial. Feminist, women are disadvantaged. Marxist, the working class is a disadvantage. So what will the sociological theories then have to say about our current situation with COVID-19? So I just want you to have a little look at these images. Again, pause it and just consider what do you think each of them, what each of these theories take is going to be on the situation that we're experiencing currently. Okay, so pause while you have a go at that. All right, so I'm gonna give you some suggestions then. And the reason I wanted to do this is I want you to see how relevant sociological theory is in any situation. No matter what we face with us in society, you can have a sociological perspective of that and you can consider that from a sociological theory. OK, so functionists would see. Obviously, the, the nature of having COVID-19, this coronavirus, is, is not a positive thing. However, they would say that there are positive outcomes of the coronavirus in the sense that we're seeing people working together. We're seeing more unity. We're seeing more collectivism in society. So our clap for carers, for example, that's showing a appreciation for others, bringing society out, bringing them together. OK, this idea of value consensus. So everyone agreeing the same thing. So everyone believing that our health is vital everyone agreeing that we need to be grateful to the nhs everybody following a set of rules set out by the government to make sure that the best outcomes happen for everybody okay um you've also got the idea here you know everything working together in organic analogy so th this idea that um in the same way they say as the body or every, all the organs work together they say that's what the society works like as well so we've got the healthcare profession which is obviously helping deal with the, the illnesses but at the same time we've got you know schools although they've had to go into you know, close off we've got a different way of working where schools are providing remote learning we've got the government that are furloughing staff and paying 80 percent of wages to allow them to keep going so we've got lots of different elements of society that are working together feminists are going to see this um situation as potentially quite negative there's been a rise i'm sure you're aware of concerns about domestic violence occurring during lockdown um women who feminists focus on women are um you know trapped in their homes essentially with people with little power to escape that and there have been um lots more cases that have come forward of domestic abuse during this time However, having said that, there's also been some sort of changes. So a, a, a liberal feminist, a feminist who's recognised that women have made some progress, would recognise that certain things have been done by society to try and deal with those women. So, for example, um, you now have um, in Boots, for example, you can go to the Boots pharmacy and there's a booth and you can use that as though you're going just to have you know, some, some health conversation. And you can use that as a place to disclose if you're experiencing domestic abuse. There's also different numbers that have been set up to give a quick line out for people to contact where you can make it anonymous so, so if there's somebody in the house they wouldn't know that you're calling um, and they wouldn't know you'd be able to the, the person on the other end would know to be careful about what they're saying so you're not having to disclose too much so literally you would just by calling that you would be making it aware that you're experiencing domestic abuse and you need some help there um, the, the other thing as well with feminists is about the domestic division of labour. So there's been some research that said that during lockdown, despite the fact men and women are at home, 
some re research says that women are still doing the majority of the work around the home. Other research has said that actually it's become really symmetrical because men are home now as well. They're not working either. And therefore, they're, they're doing a lot more around the house. There's different arguments about that. The Marxist view is an interesting one here. They may argue that the government is exercising power over the working classes. They may argue that the government have been the ones who are able to make the rules and potentially, some may say, to break the rules and get away with it. So Marxists feel that the working classes would be criminalised and fined and, and you know followed around and moved on for behaviours where they'd be breaking the rules. Whereas in the case of Dominic Cummings, for example, very publicly, he broke the rules and there doesn't seem to be any actual repercussions for that. So Marxists would say, you know, it's one rule for one class and it's another rule for the working class. Um, as I say, they might also say that actually it's just another way of the government controlling the movement of the working classes. And sort of enforcing the power. You've also got the idea that the the, uh, the media is a source of power as well, and maybe presents certain groups in a negative way. So you have seen, I'm sure, the images of lots of people going on the beach, um, and the and the the newspapers will show that in a really negative way as a way of reinforcing that you shouldn't be doing that. And look at these masses of people doing the wrong thing. And Marxists would say that's just another form of control. Functions would say it's a positive thing. Functions would say that that's a form of boundary maintenance. By showing what we shouldn't be doing, it reinforces what we should be doing. Um, but there's lots of different ways that we can address this. OK, so I just want to give you a little taste today of, you know, these sociological theories and how we can apply these different theories to lots of different areas. And that takes me then. Oh, sorry, to the key skills at A-level. So in terms of the skills that you need to have, you need to obviously have knowledge and understanding. You'll need to know key studies. You'll need to know key theories. You'll need to understand those in depth. Uh, application. So you'll need to be able to recognise examples um, that we can apply to different explanations. So examples from society. You'll need to be able to apply your knowledge to different exam questions. And then analysis is more about having a deeper exploration of different ideas. And evaluation is absolutely key. Most of your essays, or in fact, all your essays will start evaluate. OK, and therefore it's not just enough to know the stuff in sociology. You also need to be able to look at the strengths and weaknesses of different arguments. OK, so these are the core skills that we're looking at at A level. OK, so you have some summer, ta summer tasks. Now, be clear here, you have an option of three projects to complete over the summer. There are three things outlined here. Um, you're not expected to do all of them. There is a choice of three. So number one is Black Lives Matter, the history and context of black lives in the UK. OK, so obviously in the current climate, there's a huge amount going on related to the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, with the sheet that accompanies, there's a bit more guidance on the kind of things that you might look at. But it's based basically taking an uh, investigation, if you like, into the history and the experiences of black lives in the UK. So you may be looking at particular patterns and trends of inequality. You may be looking at what the context is of, of, of why inequality actually exists in the first place. Um, you may look at some of the things that have been done to try and promote racial equality already and whether that's been successful or not. Um, there's also some particular cases of um, sort of famous, if you like, cases of real inequalities that have happened, particularly failures by the by the police and the criminal justice system, which we're seeing currently at the moment. Um, that might be something else to consider. So. This research project, it will be you writing up what you have learned about the history and context of black lives in the UK and understanding why the Black Lives Matter movement is so important and potentially considering what more needs to be done to allow equality to be achieved. The second one is coronavirus, the impact and consequence of the epidemic. Apologies if you can hear my daughter screaming downstairs. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with her. Um, the impacts and consequences of the epidemic. So this is allowing you to or, or asking you to consider overall what has the impact been of the coronavirus and particularly looking at that in terms of different social groups. So which social groups have been more likely to be affected by the, the illness itself? What have been some of the consequences in terms of maybe our job security? Um, going back to what we were just discussing about the feminist view, you know, maybe experiencing domestic violence and concerns there. Um, maybe the consideration 
of the the impacts and consequences in terms of how some people have been more controlled than other during the lockdown process and coronavirus. So again, there's lots of different pointers that you consider, can consider. The final one is something slightly different. It's the corona generation, uh, using your sociological imagination, examine how COVID-19 may change young people's lives. Now, this is actually a task that's been set by the British Sociological Association and it's a competition. So this has not been by us as a school, um, but it's a competition that's going on for sociology. Um, so we thought that it would be nice to give you the opportunity to um, do that one if you wanted. So the first two is a written piece, um, but the last one, you have an option of either writing, doing a written piece or doing a video. OK, so it's up to you. There's three options there. They're all completely current to now. They're all allowing you to have a sociological look at the situation of society and to give you a feel for what it is to do, what it is to do kind of sociological research and sociological guess, sociological insight. OK, you're not being asked to do particular research. I'm not asking you to go out and do research, but just gather secondary information, you know, so research that already exists and information that already exists out there to answer these these questions and to um, present information on these one of these three areas okay so any questions um you can uh, email me my email is on the bottom of the task sheet um and i look forward to seeing many of you in uh, september